Hello and welcome to another episode of the CG Garage. This is episode number 451 featuring Benjamin Renner, who is the director of the upcoming film Migration. It's very exciting to have him on. Uh, this is a movie that's going to come out in uh, December 22nd in the United States, earlier in December for the rest of the world, uh, I believe. Uh, and it's a movie that's done by Illumination and is distributed by Universal Studios. Uh, very cool. I was able to have a small preview of the film when I was at the View Conference, which, by the way, is where I recorded this podcast. Yes, it is one of uh, the podcasts I recorded at View. Many more to come, and it was really cool to be able to do that. Benjamin is a super, super kind and very, very warm person. Uh, really great. Uh, he comes from a traditional 2D animation background. In fact, he uh, was uh, one of the people that was nominated for an Academy Award for the film he did called Ernest and Celestine back in 2012, which is a traditional uh, 2D animated film. And it was really cool to tell, talk to him about that, as well as find out what was it like to transition from 2D to a full-on 3D Hollywood-produced film like Migration and sort of hear a little bit of the story behind that. It was really interesting to hear that. Um, it was uh, lots more, like I said, lots more stuff happening from View that I'll be sharing. Some some really great people that I got to talk to there. So be on the lookout for the next several weeks for some awesome content there. Uh, I do not have many announcements. We're sort of winding down as we're in November here. Towards the end of the year, things tend to slow down a little bit. But we do have an event going on, which is going to be November 25th. Uh, it's the Chaos Neurothon. I mentioned this a few times. Uh, but the, yes, if you'd like to participate in a hackathon with us where we're going to be looking at some uh, uh, machine learning stuff, uh, we'd love to have you there. There's, in fact, going to be some cash prizes if you're not a chaos person and you'd like to participate. You know, lots of interesting things. And that's happening, in, again, in Prague on November 25th. If you want to know more about it, just go to chaos.com slash events where you can learn more and sign up if you're interested. All right. And if you guys want to know more about the podcast, just go to uh, our page is chaos.com slash CG garage. And if uh, you'd like to follow us on Facebook, it is facebook.com slash chaos uh, CG garage podcast. Uh, if you'd like to watch this podcast, it, was, it is in videos form. You can go to youtube.com slash chaos group TV, where we post all our videos, including the podcast itself. Now, again, if you guys have suggestions, of podcasts. I've been getting a lot of great ones recently. Please let us know. It is uh, Our email is labs at chaos.com. Again, it is labs at chaos.com. We, we welcome all of your suggestions. Uh, but for now, please enjoy episode number 451 with Benjamin Renner. Welcome to another CG Garage where the chaos group talks. You'll know it's over when the last bucket drops. We're gonna fire off rays in high dynamic range. We know that ambient occlusion is passe. Global illumination won't lead you astray. And while image-based lighting is really swell, you need to make sure everything has for now. Uh, all right. So, Benjamin, thank you so much. I saw your talk just moments ago. Yeah, thank It was you. A really good. I'm very excited about it. Um, I, I love animation. I think it's yeah. a fantastic form. It was interesting to hear your take on taking on a different type of animation yeah. based on what you're used to doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'd like to know a little bit about your origin story. Like, obviously, you love to draw. So, what yeah. gave you your passion for drawing and creating art? It's hard to answer because I, I, I can't. I mean, I remember drawing since I'm very, very young. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, I was the kind of kid that was in, you know, in his bubble and just like drawing all the time. And and it was a great way for me to sort of like, you know, because my parents forbid me to have a video game console like a Nintendo or Master System, like this mm -hmm. kind of thing. And and I did those thing where I actually did like video games with my brother, where, um, you know, we had like. Uh, like um, we painted like a long landscape like this <laughs> and we we just let it slide and we had a character that we made jump you know, like <laughs> the yeah, and, and if it was a very qualitative video game if we could make the, um, the character on transparent paper uh -huh. you know, like just to feel it like a really like a video game so you know like i, I kept like trying to re recreate like things that i've seen or stuff like that just to to keep living Either a video game or a film or something like that. Right. And uh, so yeah, and I, I kept having this pleasure since I'm a kid. I kept doing it, doing doing it to to the point where you decide, 
what are you going to study? And my, both my parents were doctors. They never pushed me to become a doctor or do you know, medicine studies because they, they told me you'll finish in prison if you do that by killing someone by accident or something <laughs> like that. So, and they told me you can try you know, like working out. So I, I tried those studies and mm -hmm. it, it went pretty well. I did this great school called La Poudrière in France that mm -hmm. has this, um, which is very dedicated to directing, not telling you how to learn the technicity of animation, but just like directing movies. And I learned so much in this school. And then I was very lucky, you know, like to get to, to like work on those great movies that I had the chance to work on. But yeah, so it comes from, I don't know, like something that I love to do. That's what I said, you know, like there's a question when you ask someone, are you, you know, like, um, uh, you, you, you have a skill to do, you know, like to draw. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I keep saying it's not so much. And I have a skill. It's a lot of work, of course, but it's mostly that each time you work on it, you you love working on it with it. You know, like it's you're having fun doing it because I, I've tried to learn other things. Sure. And I always tend to sort of like lose interest of it or, sure. or stuff like that or lose the passion of it. So so far, I still have a passion of drawing. It didn't become something like that I hate doing, and so that's where it's where it's come from. Right. So, yeah. But what was some of the things? I mean, obviously, your drawing style is very analog. You never seem to really you know, th that seems to work very well for you in terms of your style. Yeah. What was your, in, you said you mentioned, uh, you know, films that you like, you said also, obviously, you like, you want to re recreate video games. Yeah. Well, what were some of the films that inspired you that were doing that? Oh, uh, so many. I, I was lucky enough to have parents who had acquired almost all the classic Disney, you know, like okay. uh, before they were released in videotapes and stuff okay. like that. So very early, I, you know, they made us watch like uh, Snow White, Cinderella, all those movies, you know, like uh, the, the old one, the Sleeping Beauty. Um, I, I won't name them all, of course, okay. but and then they were really, you know, they were, they were making sure we were watching the, the right things. So, so I remember like also, I loved the, um, you know, like the Disney short films with Donald Duck or with Chip and Dale's, like those ones were my favorite, like right. absolute fa favorite. So, and we kept watching those videotapes, you know, like when we were kids, like watching film or right. videotape was something unique, you know, like it became different with Netflix and all those things, sure. streaming and, and everything. So I, I love watching it. So it comes from there a lot. And of course, as you grow up, you know, my, my biggest references that I, I understood later were you know, films like Indiana Jones, every Spielberg's movie has been mm -hmm. like, you know, stayed in my mind for, for, for a long time. The way he manages to talk about very relatable family relationship, but within, you know, like a, a scale that's great, you know, fantastic and mm -hmm. adventurous and everything. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be very original with those <laughs> references, but... No, but, but I yeah. think it's interesting. Did you, were you aware of the fact that, you know, as a kid watching Disney animations, yeah. that those are artists that are drawing those characters? Yeah, yeah, I think so, because my parents, my father especially, like, kept telling me about it, like, uh, the skills, and he really pushed me to draw, like, he never, he always, like, tried to, you know, he saw that I had a passion for this, so he, he accompanied me in in this passion so that really helped a lot you know like and because there's also a lot of movies you know that I, i've seen as a kid you know french animation legendary yes. french animated movies that I, I used to watch like the king and the bird which is one of the biggest yes uh, french you know from the i think 70s i mean it was remade in the 80s but it's mm -hmm. a very very it was actually a film that i learned later that it was one of the highlights of hayao miyazaki's career as uh -huh. well like uh, when he discovered it, he completely changed his view of cinema and his autocata as, as well. So, so yeah, that's, um, yeah. Yeah. I love, I mean, I love some of the uh, French animation, especially some of the old ones. I'm, I remember seeing Fantastic Planet and my whole world yeah. was, yeah, was yeah, blown yeah. away. Yeah, I, I discovered this one very late, but yeah. it was, yeah. I just rewatched it recently and I realized, like, I am sure that James Cameron watched Fantastic yeah. Planet before <laughs> yeah, he yeah, just yeah, says, yeah. I'm going to do Avatar. Yeah, 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 you know, so yeah. absolutely. I think it's yeah. really interesting. So, so you mentioned in your talk as well, which I thought was really cool that you uh, uh, you 
you write by drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was curious about that because I'm a I'm a dyslexic person, so yeah. writing is a pain in the ass. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 so yeah. what what's your story? What is it, how did how did that become a thing? Well, uh, when I was a kid, I remember like trying to write novels all the time and never really collecting the feedbacks that I was expecting. Sure. Each time I was sharing them, you know, when you're a kid, you expect people to be at least polite about it and so mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I could tell that people were not caring mm -hmm. at all. Like, I mean, the first time, yeah, oh, that's great. And, you know, the 10th novel that I was giving them, they were right. like, yeah, it's okay. It's <laughs> not great. So, so, but I kept drawing at the same time. It's just mm -hmm. that I love to tell stories. I, I really love that. And, and to a point where I sort of understood that I was not made for writing and sort of like felt, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not good at this, so I'm just going to forget it in high school. I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to draw and try to draw and that's all I'll, I'll do. And I did studies and, you know, uh, especially in this school that I mentioned, like mm -hmm. uh, La Poudrière, where I was supposed to do a graduation film. And I thought, okay, I need to try at least to write my own story once, you know, because that's really what I want to do as well. And, and there's an opportunity here. And, and I tried writing, but I couldn't find the way. I mean, I couldn't, it's funny because it's, it's not, I couldn't find ideas, you know, by writing. I was writing, 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 but I couldn't find ideas. And I kept trying scripts and people were like, yeah, it's not good or it's not interesting. Mm -hmm. or, and, and I had someone coming to the studio called Bernard Palacio, um, a director who actually uh, worked a lot with Jean-Francois Laguillonie, so mm -hmm. very famous French director. And he told me, well, I mean, try to do some drawings that you like and maybe an idea will come up, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because you, you can't do with writing, so just try this. And, and for some reason, I started drawing and, and almost immediately, like, the, everything unlocked, you know, like, the, all the ideas unlocked. And I remember, like, at the beginning, it was, you know, I was trying to come up with an idea, but it was funny. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being a movie called uh, A Mouse's Tale that you can find on, on the internet if people are interested in it. Because I was obsessed with um, the tale of uh, the lion and the rat. I don't know if yeah, you yeah, know yeah. about this tale. And, and I wanted to do a story around this idea of a lion and a rat, but I couldn't find, you know, what the story would be. I, I didn't want to do the exact tale. I wanted to come up with my own story, the lion and, and a rat, mm -hmm. and, or a mouse. And... And I started drawing things like that. And all of a sudden, I, I drew a drawing of a, uh, a, a mouse in the hand of the, tie, of the lion. Mm -hmm. And everything unlocked, you know, like I was, why is it there? Or maybe because it's bringing food. So I drew um, uh, a mouse sort of like, because the story is about uh, a mouse who's being trapped by a lion mm -hmm. who forced her, to, who forced the mouse to, to bring back food for, for the lion. Right. Like she becomes a sort of slave. For, for the lion mm -hmm. and the lion sort of like to make sure she's not escaping mm -hmm. he's uh, putting a, a little uh, string mm -hmm. to make sure he can you know like retrieve, take, retrieve the, yeah. the mouse if she's trying to to escape and uh, so that's the story and and um and i started like you know again like everything unlocked and and that's how i came up with the uh, with the story and I thought, great, I mean, it's okay. So then I can tell a story because the movie, lucky for me, was quite su successful in festival and everything. Right. So I thought, I didn't write a script, but I managed to tell a story without going through this process of writing a script and everything. And I started working with Ernest and Celestine after, um, Ernest and Celestine after that. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to meet um, Patar Aubier and St uh, Stéphane Aubier and uh, Vincent Patar, my co-directors on the project, mm -hmm. who are the directors of, of um, movies and TV show called A Town Called Panic, stop motion animation, that are sure. great. And those two guys were exactly like me in the sense that they were, you know, like uh, doing only storyboards. They never wrote. They always came up with their ideas of sure. the, the whole feature was storyboarded, never written. They just storyboarded the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it sort of, I all of a sudden became legitimate for me, even on a professional level, to use this method of going straight to storyboard. Not storyboard, but at least starting with drawings, and then, you know, we can, sure. we can, uh, of course, we had a script, so we followed the script, but, you know, like, um, we, 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 um, that could be my way of talking. And of then talking. the producer seeing that allowed me to do the same for the next movie after that. And lucky enough, on migration, he accepted also that when we needed to reshape a script, you know, a, sure. a, a sequence, 
he allowed me to go straight to him straight with thumbnails and right. not you know like a script then validating the script then going to thumbnails and storyboard and right which was great for me like he was confident enough with me and, and i'm happy to see that on a professional level it is possible as well to work this way well i think it's wonderful because to you the stories in the in the image yeah uh and that's the important part of it it's not always the dialogue because yeah. the dialogue obviously is open to interpretation of the image but to yeah. you the image is the primary thing and then the dialogue can become some yeah. interpreted from yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a reverse system, which yeah. is really kind of a wonderful thing. Yeah. I also think it's wonderful to think about that as well for people like other people out there who want to tell stories and don't know their medium yeah. and that there are other mediums to do it. Exactly, yeah. Because I'm talking about my method, but I'm sure there's others ways sure. of, of telling stories. You know, like the, there might be people who can only do it by talking out loud or... Right. or or, you know, like, or having uh, a conversation. Or or having <laughs> a, yeah, no, no, exactly. No, that's, that's why I think it's... It was really important just to tell people, yeah, but because you, you, in animation, I, I've met people who told me, you need a script, you need to, you know, like, you need to do this, this and that, and you can't do it otherwise. Sure. And, and you no, know, you can. And, and the way I did it was always uh, sort of like forcing my way through and just trying it with drawings. And, and they saw it was funny. So they said, okay, let's keep going then. Uh, that That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So how was how did you how did you get into doing your first uh, uh, animation outside of school? Like, what was your your break? Obviously, you're short. Yeah, got some traction, got some sudden uh, uh, festival time, and yeah. did yeah. well, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because even myself, I didn't. It was a surprise to do an animation school because I did a, an art school that was specialized in graphic novel. Oh, and, right. Uh, and there was absolutely no one doing animation in this school. Interesting. And what happened is that um, I was doing graphic novel. I was hoping to do that. But, you know, an art school being very open-minded to every medium. Sure. I started doing animation just for fun and doing art piece with animation. And it's funny how in the school, even the teachers were like amazed by the fact that I was doing animation. They were like, oh, did you do that by yourself? You know, because right. they were not animation teacher and... How did you learn animation? <laughs> well, I, I, I really, like, I was using software, like, trying... I, it's funny because I really did I learn animation on my own. And and I, I when I started, I had the weirdest reflex of doing animation. Like, for example, I started animating at 15 frames per second because I thought that was a good rate for animation where it's actually supposed to be 25 or 30. Right. And, and weird things like that, and even the way I, I, I had a scanner and I was uh, scanning all of my um, drawings. You know, I was doing um, animation with uh, how you call that charcoal. I yeah, think. charcoal. You know, something you can draw and then you can erase it and draw again and yeah. erase it because I've seen a, a film like that. So I tried and I thought, oh, that's funny. And and then I also used a, um, a software called Director that was the ancestor of Flash. Yeah. That was absolutely not made for animation. But Macro I did media my... director. Be... Exactly. <laughs> this be, before it was bought by Adobe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I did my first movie with it. Like That's my, amazing. My first animations, I did them paper cut animation with it. And mm. my graduation film that was quite successful, it was made on Macromedia Director. Yeah. And I keep yelling it each time I meet people to tell how great this software was. Yeah. And also to tell that you can use anything, you know, like to express yourself. It, it, it can work. So... So yeah, that's uh, I kind of lost track of the question right now. But no, it was uh, about, uh, about how, you, how did you get onto doing your first animation uh, yeah. project after yeah, school? Yeah. Uh, oh, after school, you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, the thing was quite successful. So what happened is that um, I started working on different production, but uh, the producer Didier Brunner, who's quite famous in France for making animation happen again in future. Mm -hmm. uh, because he produced a film called Kirikou that was a huge success in France. Mm -hmm. And he contacted me asking me if I was interested in working on a feature called Ernest and Celestine. He showed me the book. And uh, this, was, this was based on him knowing about you from your, from your short? Yeah, okay. he saw the short, uh, contacted me, asking me if I was interested in working on, on an adaptation of a children's book called Ernest and Celestine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started trying stuff. And he loved it, you know, like he really loved it. I was not supposed to be a director. There already was a director on the project. Okay. So what were you going to do? Be just being an animator or illustrator? Or helpful. Helpful. Hopefully. Sure. <laughs> you know, like uh, right. I was, I, I didn't really, I wasn't entitled to nothing. Uh, I was just the guy sort of like, so in that kind of case, you sort of become a sort of production designer. But sure. I'm, 
which was, but you know, I, I was coming out of school and my only hope was to animate on the project because I, I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And I said, if I'm a, an animator on the project, that's great. Yep. If I can help, I was the only one with the director at the moment. The director left at some point because he was not happy with the producer. They were not, he wanted to completely change the book, you know, like the okay. style of the book and the producer didn't want that. And I was doing something very faithful to the books of the producer, I really love my work. Right. And it turns out that the screenwriter who was a very famous novel, uh, um, novel artist and mm -hmm. writer in, in France. He came, you know, to the studio to, to, to see the people working on, on, on the project. And I was the only one creating pictures at the time. And I think he mistook me with a director and he really took me under his wing and, and everything. And I, I sometimes ask myself if I just became the director because my producer was too afraid to, to tell the to direct him. <laughs> and, and, and. So that's a theory that I have in the back of my hand, that's like just to justify my inspo, imposter syndrome, you know, right. like, but, but, and that's how things, you know, like my producer looked for other directors. He couldn't find one that was fitting. And at some point he, uh, he asked me to, to direct the movie and I said no. And I This is your first was, project. Yeah, so that's and why you're I, directing I was, right out of school. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and I was very worried about that. Yeah, because, of course. You know, like it's, it's, it's a good way to fail your whole career. Yeah. Way. And, and, uh, and also I wanted the movie to be good. So I knew I didn't have a skill to be a director. So I asked for co-directors. And that's where he came up with. Uh, Stefano Bien and Vincent Patar, we worked together. I was lucky enough also to be surrounded with a great, fantastic team. Patrick Imbert at the animation, who then directed um, Summit of the God. Uh, Seyri Yonde, who did the character design. Marisa Musi and Zik, who did the, all the backgrounds and even like the production design of the movie. So, so I, I directed the movie, but to be honest, we were this whole team working together, you know, being the director of the film. That was great because we were so young. And very open you know, yeah. to each other. So we really felt like we could all add our brick to the project. How old were you? At the time, I think I started, I was quite old because I'm not old, but you know, when you're studying, it's quite long. So mm -hmm. I think I was uh, 25 when I started. Wow. I might be wrong, sorry. I'm. So no, I think I was 24. And yeah, I think I was 24 or five, something like that. So too young for, right. I mean, not too young. I, I'm sure that I mean, Orson Welles, I, I don't know. 21. Like, yeah, 21. <laughs> so, you know, like, but I, I was not Orson Welles at all. Yeah, so, sure. uh, I knew that. So I said, yeah, no, I'm not a genius. So I need sure. help. So, so, but all of, of the team was very young and unexperienced. So that was great working together with this sort of motivation to, you know, like, and our producer was a legend. So very sure. experienced. And so we were lucky enough to give that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. So, how did that project go? <laughs> uh, you mean migration or no, 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 or the Alice other one. The Anis, yeah, we'll yeah, get yeah. to migration. Don't worry. We'll yeah, get no, 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 don't worry about it. No, Alice and Celine, it went really well. Great production, really fun. Uh, of course, we had challenges, but in the end, it was really a fantastic experience. Yeah, and uh, and the thing went really well. Suc uh, in terms of success, you know, audience. I mean, it was not a huge success. You know, it's mm -hmm. a French movie, so very modest and everything. But we were lucky enough to be nominated for an Academy Award, which was like huge for right. us. And to be honest, also quite stressful. Uh, first movie, you know, like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, I, I hate people to expect things out of me. And when you do a first movie and it's nominated for an Academy Award, after that, you're sort of like, there's almost only one way and it's down. <laughs> you know, like, like I, I was very afraid with that. So... But, but no, it went really great. Like it's, it's yeah. more than anything that uh, we anticipated with, uh, with the movie. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, obviously that got left people's attention and you started doing other yeah. projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But funny enough, after that, I, I felt the need to almost like withdraw from animation. Oh. And, and uh, yeah, because I, I was too afraid of the next project and I couldn't find something that fitted me because animation, it's a long process. It so is. How many years did you work on that? Alice and Sistine was four years. Four years, yeah. Uh, migration was five. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be sure that it's a project you want to spend sure. five years of your life, uh, you know, like on. So, and I couldn't find anything. So I said, okay, you're putting way too much pressure on yourself. I said, okay, I'm going to do a graphic novel, very simple one. And I did a graphic novel and was yeah. happy about it. 
But you turned that into a movie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I was almost forced to turn it into a movie. I'm, I'm exaggerating, uh, okay. but but funny enough, it's uh, I did a graphic novel, shared it with my producer, with whom I did uh, Ernest and Celestine, and and he said, let's make a movie, you know, right. <laughs> straight away. And I went, oh come on, you know, like. But can... you didn't want it. You had no intention of turning it into a movie. Yeah, know? so that's why we did. Well, it was supposed to be a TV special, like to oh, okay. in a short film, mm -hmm. and he came back to me and say, ah. Oh, do you want to do two other episodes, you know, like, so it can be, you know, like a little trilogy. It would be easier to fund it, you know, mm -hmm. to find the money for it. I say, okay, I have two other little stories that I made that we can make. And, but I'm going to ask to have a co-director who's going to work on it. So, mm -hmm. so it's fine. Uh, and then he came back to me. Uh, do you want to put all those little TV special into one, one so it becomes like a, a movie? And I said, oh, you trapped me so well. <laughs> but because I was a little bit disappointed that it would be my next movie because we made it with a tiny budget. Right. And our goal was to, the skill that we acquired on Ernest and Celestine, we wanted to, to show that we could do it even cheaper, you know, like very, like we could do a great movie, but mm -hmm. you know, great animation, but with very few money. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason why I accepted to do uh, Ernest and, uh, The Big Bad Fox. Mm -hmm. But still, the animation was, you know, like, not the same quality as Ernest and sure. Celestine. But, I mean, he, the film was very successful uh, because of also the fact that he was very cheap. So sure. uh, it was pretty successful, almost as much as Ernest and Celestine. So we, we were really happy with uh, the result. And, uh, and that's it, yeah. 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 Well, that's amazing. So this obviously led to you having a conversation with the uh, people that led to migration. So tell us yeah. about that. So you told us a little bit about it, but I'd love for people to hear a little bit about your first meeting and how you oh, found yeah. it. Oh, yeah. With Chris Medandri, yeah. yeah. He, he actually, the very first time I saw him was at a panel uh, for the Academy Awards when I was there for Ernest and Celestine, yeah. which was a very shameful moment for me because I, I remember starting crying on stage and everything because yeah. I was so stressed and everything. And I thought, okay, I'm done with Hollywood. <laughs> like, yeah. No one will ever want to work with me. Because I just mentioned that I was moved by the fact that uh, Hayao Miyazaki was nominated as well. To right. So I was very honored and everything. I started crying and everything. I thought, okay. You're not made for this world. <laughs> so, and at the end of his presentation, he came to me, Chris, and just shook my hand and said, "Oh, I'm going to contact you one one day." And I had no news for years. Uh, right. I did Big Bad Fox and everything, and I was okay with that because I was not like sure. hoping to work. I mean, I love Paris. I wanted to stay in Paris. I didn't want to move to LA to work on a on a you know like Hollywood production and everything. Mm -hmm. And so Chris, at some point, recontacted me and asked me if I wanted to meet him for a project. And in my head, I was like, why? <laughs> you know, because I, I don't know how to do 2D, uh, 3D movies. I've only right. done like Android animation movies. So I was very, very nervous meeting him. And, and I was imagining like this sort of like big Hollywood mogul that's going to be like speaking loud and everything. Right. Like, that's the only picture I had from Hollywood producers, you know, from films and everything. Uh -huh. So I was a bit afraid and, and I met him. He was very, very different from anything I expected, like very calm. And, and immediately he started talking about himself and his life. And, and I understood that it's a guy who wanted to make films about like things he lived through and not himself, but, you know, like things that we can relate to as sure. human beings, like things like our family relationship or all those kind of stuff. So. It seduced me quite a lot, but uh, but I was nervous about like working still on a big Hollywood budget. But I said, let's see how it goes. Yeah. If it goes wrong, you know, like honestly, I won't be offended that you asked me to leave or okay. or, or anything, because it was important for me to make sure that I was not going to be like this guy, sort of like. You know, my, my goal was not to be a Hollywood film director in my life. It's not something about like it's not achievement unlocked and. Right. And I'm done. I, I want to tell stories that I'm happy with. And, and he offered me an opportunity of talking about something that I love. So I said, we are going to see if it's working. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he had the idea of the movie he wanted to do. Was he yeah, yeah, yeah. He came up with, uh, I think he's, most of the time, he's at the source of the idea of the film that sure. he's producing. And which is totally fine with me because Ernest and Cecil was the same. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of like this idea of working together, you know, like with, sure. the, with the goal. I'm, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, I, I'm not very good at being... You know, this sort of like very French way of seeing the director who is the offer and he, yes. he must be like the king on the set and everything. 
because uh, it's too much pressure for me, you know, right. like, uh, and you're really talking about yourself and it's only you on screen. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I can't, I, I want, you know, to be, this to be a group work and talents working together to, to make it, yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Okay, well, it, give us at least a, a, a quick idea of what the story is about and then we'll yeah. get into some of the details. So tell us a little about the story and how he presented it to you and what yeah. you, how you did that. Yeah, he, he presented the project as uh, he told me that he wanted to make a sort of like, he told me about his, you know, like his own relationship with his wife and, and basically a love story he wanted to make. And, mm -hmm. But with ducks, which I thought was a very silly idea uh, <laughs> when he pitched it to me. But, but then he kept, we kept talking and I understood he really wanted to talk about this feeling that you have in a relationship, long-term relationship with it, when you have a family and everything, as you might drift apart step by step, you know, like um, when you're with your partner. Because you have different expectations of life, you know, like you start growing different expectations and how someone can want to have, you know, like this routine life with very, you know, like uh, the, always the same life over and over again. And how your wife or your husband wants something where you want to challenge life every day and, and everything. And how at some point these two visions of life might in your relationship, you're not happy together anymore. You can't make the other one happy. And... And you might act, have to break up despite the fact that you love each other so much still, mm -hmm. which I felt was very, very strong, you know, like thematic and that I could relate to, that I had tons of friends who could relate to this and children relating also to this kind of problem. And, and, and so, yeah, I felt yeah, serious, very serious theme, but, but I love to talk about serious theme in a very lighthearted way. So sure. I said, let's go for it. And, and we started working on this project. So, Basically, we are about to tell the, uh, the story of a little family of ducks and how they were going to step out of this routine, out of love, how a guy is going to say, okay, we don't want the same things, but I'm going to try to change for you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to really do my best to make it work because I love you really a lot and I'm going to try to change for that. And it's not black and white. It's not like in movies you change and you say you change and that's it, you, you've changed. No, it's right. hard. And the whole movie is about how hard it is to change and change your perspective of the world and, and attitude and everything. And, and so that, yeah, that's what's fun to do. Uh, of course, in a very lighthearted way, but still like it was very interesting to have a chance to talk about it with everyone and, and try to find the best way to communicate those feelings. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, you know, we, we had the privilege of watching a, a, a section of the film today yeah. and I was, yeah. could really sense the fact that 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 the, the male duck is is so set in his way so safe nothing yeah. changes yeah, nothing yeah. changes yeah, nothing yeah, changes yeah. and it's very it was you can sense how hard it was to yeah. sort of step out and they go on an adventure right yeah, 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 yeah. big migration <laughs> big migration it's trickier to do than what you expect <laughs> yeah i love road films the first time i was doing a road trip i was a bit nervous about it because it's uh, right you know like he so you create great characters that they, you meet, but you have to leave them and you would like them to keep going on the trip and everything. But, you know, that was very interesting to work on a road trip. Uh, yeah, it's my, one of my favorite genres yeah, of films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, one of my too. favorite films is Paris, Texas. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so to me, it's very, uh, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Well, okay, so tell us a little bit about that challenge, right? You said you didn't have the opportunity to work on uh, 3D. Yeah content and so how did how did you make that work how did you find a way to communicate your ideas and still keep your style and do yeah. the things you do yeah it was very tricky uh but the thing is when i arrived at the studio there was uh, the studio the studio has a set of skills that i didn't want to deny you know like, of course uh, and as a director i always chose to to make sure that i work with people uh, on alice and Cecil, to be honest i was not picturing the movie the way it is uh, in the end. And it's because, you know, working with my production designers and everything. And when I was trying to ask them, you do it this way, I could tell that they were forcing themselves and it was not great. You know, I could get to what I wanted, but it was really like a struggle. Sure. And I thought, I don't want to work this way. I want to make sure we work together. And, and so that's a lesson I learned from Ernest and Cestin and I applied immediately on, on migration. And they had this skill of making the world so real despite you know you can imagine the weirdest shape for the weirder character design they will make it real and i love that but at the same time i was worried that it would have way too many details mm -hmm. 
and and because I like simple picture, very minimalistic and, and everything. Other than if it's not like this, I can't you know like be a good judge of, of it. Sure. So I kept telling them like make sure that it's simple and and everything. And but they were very open to that. And and uh, as we started working together, uh, there were some challenges, you know, for me because. You know, when I work in 2D, that's something I mentioned in the conference, but uh, when I work in 2D, um, I'm used to start drawing and, and you know, like you, you stop as soon, you add elements to a blank page and as soon as you have got what you need, you stop, you know, like right. you, you stop drawing. And 3D felt like the opposite, like you, they were asking me, for example, the pond, they were asking me every detail of it, like every stone, every, everything right. for all the sets and you have to do it before even you start like staging things inside right. the place. So I was, I'm more used to like, you know, you, you draw your thing and when you need something, you move it or, you know, like you, you add an element to right. it. And, and so I couldn't do that. So, so it was very tricky to, to work this way. And, and that way you, you, you have a set that's completely filled with elements. So it was very overwhelming for me because I didn't know where to look. There were way too many elements and it's, after when you start like removing with the shadows and lights and defocus and everything. Yeah. But at some point you start, start to remove elements, you know, like uh, hide them in shadows or use the light to sort of like uh, um, blend the whole thing. And you start to get the feeling of the emotion that you're supposed to express. And right. so I always say like to the animation, at least for me, it felt like blank page. You start from nothing, you add elements. So you get and you stop as soon as you get your what you want to say. And 3D is the opposite. You have everything and you have to remove elements to right. get to what you want to, to express. So, so we, in the end, everyone was so open-minded about the other one that we listened to each other a lot and we found they were happy to have someone new coming with a new, new ideas, take yeah, on, to, yeah. on, you know, like 3D and, and everything. And the other way around, I was really happy to learn from 3D and, yeah. and make sure we could make the best thing you could do doing that. I thought it was really amazing when you were showing some of the early concepts that you were doing for each of the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you came with the, you had the, 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 young, the young girl duck. Uh, yeah. I forgot her name, but. Yeah, Gwen. Yeah, Gwen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and you illustrated her literally with just a, a splat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a small splat yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of, uh, of watercolor. And then yeah. you just drew in the eyes, yeah, the yeah, yeah. quick eyes, feet. And it was like, oh my God, that's yeah. exactly right. And it was not even a splat. It was really like carefully, like just leaving one drop of water and letting it dry slowly. Yeah. Because the splat would have made her like explode. explode. You yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. So I was really careful about Because I tried that and it felt, nah, she's too. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so yeah, that's a really, really subtle uh, yeah, detail. But, but yeah, yeah, that was. Um, that must have been amazing for the concept people to look at that and try to imagine. Imagine yeah. the, the entirety of the duck. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. well, that was uh, for me. It's it's um, it's funny because when I work and when I'm lost, that's always the thing I do is is um, uh, either I draw very small, so I'm forced to draw it very simply, uh, and all of a sudden, like I, I have ideas uh, doing this way. Sure. And it was sort of the same with the characters design. We were a little bit lost. We didn't really know where to go because you know we were changing things. And Chris wanted something very naturalistic, so we had very naturalistic ducks. And we couldn't make it work. So, so I do what I always do. Like I draw them very, very small and try to get, you know, like, cause you, you're forced to make sure that it's, you know, like something is going to come out of, of that. So that's why I force myself to say, okay, I have, I'm allowed to do like three brush stroke maximum and I have to express the character this way. Wow. And, uh, and, and so that's what I did. And I said, okay, so it's like that. So, oh, I see Mac here. Right. So let's share it with the others. And, and, uh, I think it's a good method when you're lost, you know, like to do as simple as possible just to see what's the essence of what you're trying sure. to express. Yeah. And is watercolor your medium of court of choice? Funny enough, I'm really bad at watercolor, okay. but it's just so easy to use sure. and quick that, yeah, I'm, but, but I'm the worst, you know, I did a whole graphic novel on watercolor yeah. and it's not even on the right kind of paper. So all my, my, um, my, uh, original, you know, like, uh, pages, mm -hmm. are you know, there's someone who wanted to buy them and I showed him, I told him you can't buy this and it, because it's all like, warped. You know, like yeah work with the water and everything and and even it was a nightmare to scan them and remove all the, the creases. you know like uh, it was so so complicated and for some reason I, I don't want to do it on real watercolor paper because sure. it costs too much so i'm i'm just doing it like i like to do watercolor because it's so quick so fast right. but uh, it's sort of like a medium that i like to 
to use, but I'm very open to other, you know, like techniques. And sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Uh, what I mean, what what was it like to give feedback and 3D? Like, was it a new? Like, was it your first time to sort of look at a turntable of a duck yeah, or things yeah. like that? Yeah, the turntable is something. You know, when you discover characters for the first time, it's tricky because they are like literally like that. You know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. and you you're sort of like, well, it sucks <laughs> like uh, and and to be honest i actually myself like really validated the characters once i saw them animated but right. even like long in the process because we had to you know also chris miller is very involved in the process of designing okay. the character so he sort of at some point he sort of validated characters and i was very skeptical about them i felt felt they were very generic and, and not very interested in design except for gwen and dax which i felt had something very strong but mac mm -hmm. and pam i felt wow generic I'm, I'm not happy about it and we started animating them and now i can't change like they, they are who they right. you know, they're exactly what i expected them to be and and i was relieved like but it lasted like for two weeks you know where i was a bit skeptical for the time to see the first animation coming up and i said they are great they are great characters it's exactly mm -hmm. who they should be and and uh so yeah, for, again, for, that's a challenge because again, in 2D animation, it's so fast to see the final product, you know, right. like to fit, not product, sorry, it's a wrong word, but the final image of the, of the, your final production, you know, you can very, you have a background, you do the characters and there it's there, you have the final picture, you do a little bit of compositing, your lights and everything, and, and that's it. You have the final look of your film. And here it took us, maybe it was two years into production before I finally saw the first picture you know, of what the film would look like. So I was very nervous all that time. So yeah. I was thinking, are they doing the right thing? Because you're completely blind. You have no idea how to do that. So yeah. I couldn't be involved in, in doing the pictures. And, and I remember even seeing it for the first time. I, I was a bit nervous because they told me that Garth Jennings, the first time he saw, because he's coming from live action. So he's sure. never done. Uh, he did the director of Sing. And the very first time he saw the picture, he started like crying. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they told me about it, like before I saw the first picture, I was like, oh, sh no, I have a pressure. I need to cry the first time I see it. <laughs> and the first picture they showed me, I was, I was very annoyed because I was like, I don't really like it. I'm right. so sorry. And, and then I explained why and we tried to find why and, sure. and exactly. And, and because it was too complex, as I told you, you know, there mm -hmm. was everything, all the rocks and everything. And I said, we need to find ways to... You know, like make it more simple and, and more accurate to what we're trying to achieve and and that's what we did and and again it's more like when you the film started like to take shape and sequences being made that i sort of like okay yes yeah, so i that's the movie and and that's how we're going to do it and and uh so it was a long process before you sort of like finally get okay that's it you know like that's yeah. what we're doing yeah yeah that's awesome that's awesome i think it's really cool that you know that was uh a process of, of, of being scared and learning yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's funny because my, my girlfriend, she's directing her first feature. Oh, nice. Uh, in animation. And she's so scared of everything. And I keep telling her, it's good that you're scared. It's something that I learned also right. quite af for quite long after I started working in animation as a director. I told her, it's good that you're scared because that means you, you want the film to be better and you want, right. you know, you're, you're being hard on yourself. You shouldn't be too hard, you know, like, but sure. it's normal to be scared. And if you were not, that's almost like scary because that means you didn't care anymore. Right. You know, like, uh, so it's like your kids, you know, like you, you're scared for them all the time because sure. you want, you know, them to be, have a great life and everything. So you're always sort of like worried about them and, and, and everything. But in the end, it's for a good reason. And yeah. The day you start being scared for your kids, they can, you know, like, uh, yeah. I mean, it might be even dangerous for them, you know. Sure. So that's, uh, sure. Yeah. I, I actually remember there's a quote that where uh, uh, Bill Hader was talking about yeah. talking to Jeff Bridges and how yeah. he was telling Jeff Bridges how he's always so scared before he starts doing anything and yeah. acting and because he doesn't know if he can do it and yeah, yeah, self doubt, yeah. all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jeff Bridges looked at him and was like, he asked him, do you feel that way? He goes, yeah. Yeah. I always feel like that. That's that's your buddy down there that's getting you to fire to yeah. want to do the things. And yeah. other feet. otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't put any effort into it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess there are people who are not scared, but they're genius. You know, like they, they do that. Well, so. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe they just don't tell you that they're not scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that probably it as well. But but yeah, at least, I'm, yeah, at least I, I think that's something that's almost... You have to embrace this fear and make it like your engine sure. in, in a way. 
So, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be, you should be always scared and your life should be a nightmare, but you know, like you have to make sure that, that you challenge yourself and you're trying to do the best that you can do. And, and yeah, and, the, and it's never going to be the best you can do. Sure. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the, the curse that we have as directors. You, I remember Brad Bird mentioning about like when he's working on the film, he was saying that when he starts a movie, it's going to be the best thing ever. He has so much great intentions for mm -hmm. it. He's going to cure cancer. It's going to be everything, you know, right. that world people peace. are, yeah, <laughs> world peace, everything. And, and as you do it, you, your, your hopes are sort of like, you know, crumbling a yep. little bit step by step. And, and of course, because, you know, you're confronted to reality and it's much harder to right. create an emotion than anything that you think. But you're trying and that's what's making it great. You know, sure. like that's what's making, and that's why I told my girlfriend, it might not be perfect yet, but you're trying to make it the best it can be. And that's all you need to do. That's, right. uh, but you need to sincerely try, you know, like not like just, I'm trying, I'm trying. It's something no. that must be really like, you're trying your best and you need to at some point say, okay, I have to let go of this and focus on the next thing. So, so, so yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting process. Uh, so, so the act of, you coming out of your comfort zone yeah. and struggling and being fearful, how much of that reflected in the character, Mac? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's definitely... Uh, Mac was def that's very easy to handle because it's a character that I understood everything from sure. him, you know, like... Uh, and it's true, there was a parallel between our own act of creation and the, what he was living himself mm -hmm. with the comfort zone and everything. So, so yeah, no, I, I was relating a lot to, to, to this. I guess it's more for the other characters that was trickier to handle, you mm -hmm. know, like... Uh, like uh, Pam was not an easy character because we didn't want her to be the mother that's going to be just like wisdom and, you know, like always having you know, the right. truth and everything. We wanted her to be a fun character, like very mm -hmm. peppy character. And and so it, it was a little bit trickier for us, but, but uh, in the end, I'm happy, you know, especially with Elizabeth Banks who brought so much to the character, you know, to right. make her like interesting female sort of like very, you know, like, um, and she understood everything that we sure. told her when we mentioned, you know, the husband is like this. And I think she was like, yeah, well, <laughs> so that's <laughs> yeah. my life. So I definitely know how to make this guy, you know, I, I know how to love him, but at the same time, sort of like shake his, you know, like uh, butt to make him, you know, like step out of his comfort zone and, right. and everything. Yeah. What was it like directing uh, the voice actors? For this? It was actually very stressful at the beginning and uh -huh. stressful all the time. For me, actors is, is I love work to work with them, but but the thing is, uh, in France, um, always worked with someone with me, uh, like directing them, and I'm okay. sort of like coming in, and I mean I'm always there, but I'm right. sort of saying, oh, we could try it this way as well, I'm sort of correcting what the the per we call that like a, an act or a, sort of like a director of acting or yeah, yeah, something act, like okay, that. Okay. And and here, you know, I started. So who's going to be my uh, this person and the, oh, but it's you. It's just you, and the screenwriter is here. He can come in sometime, but yeah. it's just you. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I, I don't. You know, English is not my native yeah. language. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, but, uh, we'll see how it goes. And 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 I started recording with Kumail, and and I was very nervous, but he was also very open and mm -hmm. to having because I was nervous. You know, like this French little guy coming and oh, you shouldn't do it this way. You should, you know, like uh, right. is he going to listen to me and. He was so open-minded uh, that it really went well, but it's always very stressful for me. You know, sure. like to actors, it's because you have to know what you want straight away. And I have this problem also that I I tend to have something very precise in mind, and I know it's not very pleasant for an actor to really try to match something that the director has. Right. Made. They're also here to bring something new or bring their own personality, their own personality, their right. own way of saying things, and sometimes it's going to be different. So you have to very quickly. Okay, so I didn't do the way. I wanted, but is that, uh, you know, is that worth asking him again or should I move to, you know, another scene or, you know, like, uh, is it going to work on the project? So that's a tricky thing. Uh, and, you know, like, so that was, yeah, and very intense. Like, uh, I lost like liters of water each time I was <laughs> doing those uh, records, but that was great in the end. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, what was your, I mean, obviously it was five years, which is a long time, right? Yeah, yeah way uh, too long. <laughs> yeah. Way too long, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, there probably was one year too many, but, you know, COVID. COVID, was, yeah. The main reason why it took yeah. us so long. Yeah. But what was your favorite time, process, time well, thing to do during that process? What was your favorite part of the process? Um, the thing is that all the processes are sort of like uh, on a production such as, 
and illumination all the process are sort of like mixed uh, interlocked yeah. interlocked yes yeah. so I mean the design you know development of a character design is great and everything mm-hmm. but but to me where I'm, I'm really having fun is the storyboard because mm. uh, that's where I feel like I have my toys and I'm playing you mm-hmm. know like it's going back to being a kid and playing video games or recreating the f- movies that right. you wanted to to see or just like scenes that you loved and, and I think so it's the storyboard but but you, here the storyboard lasted to the very last minute like oh, um, wow. still we were mixing we are still like thinking okay maybe we can change this maybe we can change that mm-hmm. in order to improve which is something that I'm not used to do at all meaning that something that went through animation to compositing can still be like changed sure and and so so that was great but at the same time you know it's also a little bit weird because you feel like you're building a castle on a uh, moving sand, you know, like uh, it's you're, sure. tr- you're trying to build something and all of a sudden, you know, you tell, we are being told that no, we're going to try to do this differently. And you say, yeah, but I put this rock because I needed this R- to right. hold. And, and so you're, you can't, it's really hard to get a, you know, like a yeah. that's going to work. And that was my big worry. And at the same time, it taught me also how resilient I can be <laughs> you know, sure. like to, and because there were moments where you know like we tried this a sequence like this like that like this mm-hmm. and there's always something that's not working and I, there were moments where I was like I can't do another version I have, I have no idea of how to do it better and sure and for some reason you know and you I always you know I had the comment of Chris always very intelligent smart comments and but I was like there's no way I can find another way of doing it I'm sorry you right and, and, and each time I was uh, I can't do it. I, I started doing it. And, and it puts you in very desperate moments when you're, you know, when you're redoing a sequence in storyboard and it's not working, working, working. And, right, right, right. And, and you feel you're desperate. You will never find the answer. But when you find it, it's so <laughs> great. You know, like yeah. you find me, oh, that was it. And it's better also, you know, like sure. it's, it's really better. So, so I was very happy about, you know, learning about how, because I have the thing is that in animation, I love to redo things and really look for the best way to tell a story. Something in French production that's a bit tricky to do because, you know, we are a little bit limited by time and budget. Mm-hmm. But here with the US, we, the producer has as much time as he wants. Because the dynamic is very different. In France, the producer is begging the director to validate something. And in US production, at least the way I lived it was almost the other way around. Right. Not, that, not that I was begging Chris to, to validate, but, you know, you're you're trying trying again at some point you're sort of like oh god is it going to work this time Mm -hmm. or or is it me you know you're losing perspective on what you're doing and but then he's such a great audience you know like he's really reacting as a genuine audience that Mm -hmm. it's really great to have a chance to have someone that you can show him anything and he's going to react probably he has a very strong connection to the general what the general audience feels and and that's a huge talent that he has i think huge skill yeah yeah awesome what was it like working on an English, uh, on, a, on a project in English? Well, again, it was a challenge, sure. but, but it's sort of like something that I took. Well, if people understand me, I guess it's working, you know, sure. like, uh, and I kept speaking English and it's tricky, of course. The worst moments, I think, are the moments with the actors when they started, you know, because I was not alone, there was a screenwriter and they started like doing jokes and they were speaking so fast that I couldn't understand. <laughs> and me at some point just sort of like seeing that everyone's laughing and sort of the ha 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 ha. So, uh, next scene. Uh, <laughs> and they could, could really tell when I couldn't understand and I was a little bit too shameful to admit that I couldn't understand what they yeah. were saying. So, so, but generally speaking, yeah, it was, it was going all right. And, and also like collecting my producer's thoughts was, a bit of a trick, you know, like just to make sure that I understood, right? Because mm-hmm. communication is so important. Sure. You know, it's a group work. So, yep. so you need to make sure that everyone understands what, what we want. And, and even in the same language, I can see how people cannot understand each right. other. I always remember, I don't know if you know this show, Silicon Valley. Of course. But there's a, an episode <laughs> that's great where I think it's the guy who's supposed to be sort of Bill Gates. He's oh, yeah, yeah. preparing a conference and he's leaving because he has to go on a trip. And he says, oh, by the way, um, don't forget to make the, the to keep the honey uh, out of the bear or something right, like right. that. And he's leaving, and people are 
what did he mean? Like that? And they all have different interpretations, <laughs> interpretations of, yeah. of it. And in the end, it just meant that they need to clean the, the pot of <laughs> honey that was shaped like a bear. And that's exactly what you can leave, you know, with, with kind of production, you know, people receiving one sentences. And so if the director said that, but I don't, I don't understand what he means. And, yep. and so you need to make sure that communication is going through, you know, like everyone understands each other really yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, when is this coming out? Uh, so in in the US, I have to admit, but I'm not sure about the date. I think okay. the 23rd of December, if I'm correct. 22nd, 22nd of December. December. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I know in France it's going to be released a little bit sooner, but uh, okay. But yeah, it's for Christmas. Basically. It's a Christmas film. Yeah, so Christmas wonderful. Film. Okay, we have something great to look forward to. And thank you so much for being on oh, the yeah, podcast. Well, no, no, that's great. Thank you so much for having me. That was great. Fun to... to it's very egocentric to talk about myself, but, but I love it. You know, like I need that sometimes. So, well, it's good. So. Congratulations. It looks really amazing. Thank I can't wait, so wait to see the whole movie when it comes out. The yeah. thing, this scene you showed of them arriving in New York, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, I really want to see this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you actually saw the boring part, I would say, of the yeah. movie, you know, with the, the beginning, because it was made to be a little bit boring so that when they take off, finally, yeah, you know, it explodes. Yeah, that's still Yeah. So I hope you... you, you oh, I'm there, definitely going to see it. And yeah, I yeah. love the animation of the eyes, I thought was absolutely yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great, great. Great, great, great job. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.